On our last day in Chicago, we started our day by eating breakfast at Panera Bread, and then afterwards, to kill a little time before the bus, we went to the public library and looked at the big gargoyles that sat on the top of the roof. On May 26, 1934, a gleaming new train named for a Greek god of wind began a non-stop dawn-to-dusk speed run from Denver to Chicago. The Zephyr completed the trip in just over 13 hours, ushering in a new height of train travel and style. Its sleek, Art Deco form was soon to be mirrored in everyday items from transportation to toasters. The train featured extensive use of stainless steel and was meant as a promotional tool. Its diesel electric engine, innovative construction, and lower center of gravity allowed it to travel faster and more efficiently than steam locomotives. The train entered regular revenue service on November 11, 1934, between Kansas City and Lincoln, Nebraska, until its retirement in 1960, when it was donated to the museum where it remains on public display. The museum displayed the Pioneer Zephyr outdoors with no protection from the weather until 1994. At that time, the museum dug a pit in front of the building and built a new display area for the Zephyr where it could be displayed year round. In 1998, the train received a cosmetic restoration. Jenny. It was a plane that greatly influenced military, recreational, and commercial aviation. It was usually the first plane most Americans saw. The plane on the right is the Boeing 40B, an established commercial airmail service, and was a boon to the aviation industry. The Mark I Spitfire is often credited with winning the Battle of Britain and was flown by many of the most famous fighter pilots during the duration of World War II. The Spitfire is positioned in a cat and mouse game with the enemy German Stuka. The Stuka is only one of two surviving in the world. The plane revolutionized military aviation and warfare with its blitzkrieg tactics of fast aggressive dive bombing.
This is the German U-505 exhibit. It is one of five submarines captured in World War II. After the war, the Navy had no further use for it and decided to use her as target practice. In September 1954, the U-505 was donated to the city of Chicago by the U.S. government and was dedicated as a permanent exhibit and war memorial to all the sailors who lost their lives in the First and Second Battle of the Atlantic. She had been sitting neglected for nearly 10 years and had been stripped of all of her interior. The museum contacted the German manufacturers who supplied the original components and parts asking for replacements. The company supplied the requested parts without charge. In 1989, she was designated a National Historic Landmark. In 2002, the U-boat's exterior had suffered noticeable damage from the weather, so in 2004, the museum moved the U-boat to a new underground covered climate control location now protected from the elements. The restored U-505 is open to the public.